What I do is I drive a spike through a two by four to make it just a little harder. I put a little sheet metal on top. So I come down with such velocity and such force and such impact, something's gonna give. Without the bricks to protect him, it certainly sounds more genuine. And as long as it's not another trick, it may give me a reason to look further into John's superhuman claims. I may bruise a little bit, I may bleed a, bit, a little bit. It's just part of the course. It's a very, everything I do is dangerous, everything I do is risk. All right. All right? So let me give me a second to Ready? So you ready, Gina? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. This time, with nothing absorbing the energy, John's head is taking the full force of every impact. It's brutal to watch. Withstanding such impacts to the head defies human biology. It's fun, this is fun. This is enough force to knock you out, or even worse, crack bone. John has convinced me that this must be something more than just a trick. Is he genetically different? Are you all right, dude? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. This is crazy. I mean, you clearly drove it through here and invented it. Oh. Man, that was in there. Yeah, you know? When I hit it, something's going to break. I mean, you look rough, but you seem fine. Oh. And, and you're totally in an in a alert mental status. Yep. I mean. I just don't see how a person's skull and brain can keep taking so many impacts. I mean, I gotta figure out how you're able right. to do this. To help me get some answers, I'm taking John to Harvard Medical School to meet neurologist Dr. Martha Shinton. And he said he discovered this when he was 15 years old, when he was chasing his brother. And brain trauma expert Chris Nowinski, an ex-professional wrestler who was forced to quit after repetitive head impacts. It's not a question of pain, it's a question of why isn't he getting knocked out? Why doesn't he feel sick afterwards? We want to find out why John's skull hasn't cracked over years of continuous impacts and see if there's a superhuman reason why his brain hasn't suffered any permanent damage. Dr. Shinton and her assistant, Janice Fairhurst, will perform an MRI scan. Here we go. That'll allow us to take a closer look inside John's head. So here's a coronal image of his brain, which is front to back. And this is a sagittal image, ear to ear. You can see his nose here. Is it normally like uh, bulge out like that? This part, in fact, does look actually thicker in the front. Oh, so wow. his skull is actually thicker than you would ordinarily see in so, a normal control. So he is different? He is different, yes. The MRI has revealed that John's skull is incredibly thick. But how does it compare with the rest of us? I've been looking at MRI scans since I would say 1988, and this is unusual to see a skull that's this thick. 16 millimeters. 16 millimeters? Well, what's the average thickness of a skull? Seven millimeters. What? He definitely has a very thick skull. Incredibly, John's skull is 16 millimeters thick, twice that of an average human. But although this explains why it doesn't crack under the pressure, has his brain suffered the consequences from years of high impact knocks to the head? So these are actual images of his brain now? Right. And so uh, how's his brain looking? Uh, overall, it looks fine. I mean, given what he's been doing to his skull, this doesn't look abnormal. Right now, it seems like he looks okay. His brain looks healthy. You know, John's special. John doesn't care about the pain. He doesn't feel anything. And that's what's strange. Like, he doesn't feel dizzy. He doesn't get knocked unconscious. It's remarkable. I may have doubted John's powers, but the results now prove his abilities are far from fake. John's superhuman thick skull not only defies head cracking impacts, but it's also protected his brain from damage. Having a super tough skull like that, that's why I'm able to do what I am able to do.